Today I'm testing out a remote tuner and I'm going to need it for this antenna. What we have going on is I'm at the seventh area CUSO party while I'm getting ready. I'm at a campsite in the middle of nowhere and I'm setting up a big antenna. This is an antenna that I really like to use on special events. It's 108 feet one way and 108 feet the other direction. It's on a mast, a portable mast that I put up. It's 36 feet tall and this is fed by 60 feet of ladder line. At the end of my ladder line for this antenna is my four to one current Ballin from Ballin Designs. And normally, if I'm using a radio that has a tuner, that's gonna be sufficient, but I don't have a radio with a tuner today. I'm using the Kenwood TS480 HX. So Chameleon has a new remote tuner. It's the CHA URT1 Universal Remote Tuner. So for today, the antenna is going into the tuner, the remote tuner, and that goes back into my camper where I've got the remote head and I'm ready to test this out. With this 216 foot doublet antenna fed by 60 feet of ladder line, I'm really expecting some great performance, but we're gonna try this remote tuner to see if this really does help us out. This is the remote controller for the URT1. I'm running this off of battery powered since we're out here remote and I'm running this supplied cord into my battery and I'm using the 20 amp hour eco worthy battery to power that. And the radio side of the tuner goes right into my radio. My radio has an auto tune function. Well, it's a carrier function, so I can use a remote tuner or other kind of tuner outside of the radio because it doesn't have a tuner internally. To use the tuner, you land on the frequency that you're looking to use, you hit the tune button, and then throw your carrier on your radio. It should find a good tune within five seconds or less. So starting with 10 meters, let's see what the SWR is. So it's way out of tune and I want to use a remote tuner. So I press the tune button, send my carrier. And now we're good. Turn the volume down. So now when I check my SWR, it's one to one. When you're using the universal remote tuner, you're going to do a tune cycle. And so I've noticed on a bunch of frequencies, when I hit the tune button on the remote tuner head and I hit the carrier on my radio, I'll count to five because the manual says it could be up to five seconds. And I'll notice about three to four seconds, there'll be a blip in my SWR reading. And that's usually an indication that we're good to go. All right, so you can see how this thing works. It's pretty straightforward. You throw your carrier, you hit the tune button, and within five seconds, you get a match. I am running on generator power for this adventure. I do have batteries just in case something goes wrong with the generator or in case there was noise, but it doesn't seem like I'm getting any noise on any of the bands from the generator. When I use the tuner and just experimenting so far, it sure is quiet out here, and that's gonna be really good for contesting to pick up some quieter stations, and I'm hoping for some DX as well. But I really like how simple this is. Now the actual module itself is waterproof. The remote tuner itself is good for a wire antenna or an antenna like I'm using, actually any kind of antenna that you can put onto this thing. You just set it up differently depending on the antenna setup that you're using. But so far the operation is pretty simple. It does use a bias T to power the remote tuner from afar. In reading the manual, it does say that you can take this tuner and set it up so that it's the tuner and the remote head are both inside. They don't have to be outside like this, but that's the setup that we're gonna be doing for this operation. When you order a URT1, what do you get? Well, you get the tuner itself with the Beehive connector and the two UHF connectors on the bottom with its ground lug, the coupler which controls the unit, radio connection and the coupler to the tuner itself, and a power port. And you also get a power cord that comes with it. You can connect this to any power source you want. If you've got a power supply for a radio or a battery, you can hook it to that. If you don't have any spare cable, you can get the optional three foot section of coax, RG8X, to hook the two devices together, especially if you're gonna use this in a shack and you're gonna hook them up next to each other. If you don't have a battery, you can run the tuner with the optional AC power supply. This is a wall wart that plugs right into the coupler and will power the unit. And for mounting the tuner outside, the unit comes with two mounting brackets. So you can have multiple options of mounting the tuner Another thing I like about this Chameleon URT1 is the noise level. This thing is really quiet. If you compare this to another tuner that I like and that I've used for many years, it does a good job, it's done a good job in the past, but it is a noisy, crazy noisy tuner. And when I'm camping, my wife might be sleeping in the morning or in the evening, and if I need to tune up an antenna when we're out operating portable, that thing goes on like this. That 
even though that works good, that's crazy. So oftentimes I can't use the tuner because of that. And by contrast, the URT1, but if I had it inside the camper with me, this is what it would sound like. So I could have this actually outside and I would hear no noise at all. And in fairness, both antennas have memories and they store the frequencies that you've used recently. So if you go back to that, the tune may not take as long as this, like up to five seconds. It could be just one second. But the point is, you've got to find it first. And since I used different antennas all the time, that remembered frequency is never the same. Something else that I like about the URT1 versus other tuners, whether it's a manual tuner, I keep in the trailer with me, taking them outside and putting them by an antenna requires a waterproof case, a power source normally, and some effort. With the URT1, this thing is fully enclosed. It's waterproof. You have to seal the coax, obviously. And with the Bias T powering the tuner, there's nothing that I have to do. The power stays in with me wherever I'm operating. Now, speaking of power, one of the other features of the URT1 is its latching relays. And what that means is when you hit a frequency, the power shuts off. The relays latch onto that frequency, and the energy required to power the tuner shuts off. So that could save on battery. If you're operating portable, this could be a big deal. So that's another benefit of the URT1 is the fact that it doesn't use a lot of power, shuts off in between uses. Other tuners are always on. They're always holding that tune wherever you move. And that's a reason why you have to press the tune button because you're reactivating it again. If saving battery is not a big deal, then maybe pushing a button is going to be annoying for you. I didn't find it too traumatic and actually it actually worked pretty good into the workflow. The URT1 allows you to hook up two different antennas. One is the Beehive connector on the top, and that's for a wire antenna. The coax connector, the UHF connector on the bottom, is for hooking up a different antenna, like a dipole or something that requires coax. You can only hook up one antenna at a time, whether it's the Beehive connection for a wire antenna or some other antenna that you're using coax to connect on the bottom. You cannot use two at the same time. With any device that requires bias T, you cannot put anything in between the tuner and the antenna. You can't have switches or any other meters or anything that's going to interfere with the power going from the bias T at the tuner module, the control module, out to the actual tuner. It really is that simple to operate. And the fact that it's small, it's quiet, and it's waterproof. It's easy to operate. The tuner can be put outside, and I don't have to have extra gear running into the rig. I can make a permanent connection for all my coax and just be done with it. On the other hand, it would be really nice to have a 43-foot vertical antenna where I can hook up a remote tuner like this at the base like needs to be and run a contest off of that. So the next test I'm going to show you is this antenna right here. It is a military-style NVIS 40 and 80 meter antenna. I'm using some fiberglass mast and I've got my two radials coming off of the center insulator. Uh, 40 and 80 and the uh, feed line is attached to the center insulator on, with a choke. I want to test this now with the rig expert, the 500. I picked this up because I wanted something smaller to test antennas with when you're out here in the field and this seems to fit the bill. So I want to show you what it looks like without an antenna tuner and then we'll hook up the antenna tuner to it see how hard it has to work and if it can match this. Well as you can see here on 40 meters the SWR is five to one to start off with. It ends up, you know, between five and 10. 80 meter starts out at 12 to one and ends off at 11. So that's gonna be a lot of work for that tuner to do to get this thing all dialed in. I've mounted the ERT-1 onto this pipe, which I'm gonna put into the ground. And I've attached some ground braid strap with a little alligator clip. And that's gonna go onto the ground rod that I'm gonna put into the ground. This is the mount that you get with the ERT-1. So you can use it for, you know, whatever situation you want. This is the first one here. I may use this on the RV this way, I'm not sure, but it's a good test out here in the field. I'm not using this copper rod for a ground rod, really. It's just a, something to put into the ground. And this pipe's gonna fit into the other pipe and let this slide around. So I can easily take this thing apart if there's inclement weather or there's some problem going on and I gotta disappear quick. And because I have this loose like this, I can connect the antenna to it right here, and I'm not stuck on the ground having to deal with this. That's one of the things about setting up portable. You can make it hard on yourself, or you can make it really hard on yourself. All right, the tuner is hooked up outside, and I've got the coax feed coming into the cab of the truck here, and I've got the coupler set up. I've got it powered on, 
and both the radio and the coupler powered on running with my temporary battery so I'm not going through the truck power. So that was about three seconds to tune on 40 meters and I think that was only like 10 to 1, something like that. Now let's try 80 meters and see what we get there. This is close to 12 to 1 so let's see if the uh, tuner can handle this. So it sounded like the tuner didn't have any problem getting this done. It took about four seconds to do here on 80 meters and three seconds to get 40 meters tuned in. All right, the second antenna I'm gonna be testing is the Chameleon Tactical Delta Loop. It's an NVIS antenna and we're just a little bit off the ground. We've got our feed line with our choke like last time, two 17 foot whips on either side and the 25 foot wire that connects the two sides. This is another style of antenna you'd use for near vertical incidence Skywave. So now let's get a reading for this antenna. So 80 meters starts out at three to one, goes to the lowest point, 2.9. And on 40, we're at 2.2 to one. It's pretty much flat across the band. I really like this paper display. I mean, you can totally see this so well in the daylight. I'm gonna check 20 meters. This is uh, almost flat at 1.89. 15 meters, something I would use. Also 1.42, uh, still, that's not bad. I, I could probably use this without a tuner still. And 10 meters, uh, the highest point is uh, 1.59. Most of these I could use without a tuner, but let's see how well the tuner does getting this styled in. So the tactical delta loop antenna is outside and I'm back in the truck with the 857 and I wanna see if the antenna tuner works uh, with that antenna as well. Kilo 7 Sierra Whiskey. Yeah, Kilo 7 Sierra Whiskey. We've got you from your GQSL. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for picking me up, 7-3. All right, so I got these two antennas done. I was able to use them with the tuner. This military style one here, it's not very good as far as SWR. And so I wanted to see if the antenna tuner would match that, and it did a good job. The tactical delta loop really didn't need it that much, but I used it anyway just to make sure that it does what it says it will do. These are just a couple examples of using the Universal Remote Tuner from Chameleon. What do I think about this tuner? With its coverage of 6 meters to 160 meters, that's going to work out pretty good for any antenna I'm going to put together. And with 16,000 memories, that's going to be plenty for all the operating I'm going to be doing. And with a matching impedance of 5 ohms to 1500 ohms, this should cover any experiment that I'm going to be doing. This tuner is 125 watts, so for an average radio, that's going to be plenty fine, whether you're out in the field, or in your shop. If you've got an amplifier, you're obviously going to be picking a bigger tuner for that. So in my opinion, the fact that this is a rugged tuner, outdoor rated, wide range capacity, and it's radio agnostic, meaning you can hook it up to any radio that can just throw a carrier, that means you don't need any special wiring or special control cable. I give this tuner a thumbs up. Like you should give this video a thumbs up. Thank you Chameleon for letting me test out the URT1 and to show it to you guys. So you can make a decision for yourself if this is something you want to buy. Check out the link in the description below and learn more about this tuner. Now, if you want to see more videos on portable operating and ham radio setup, check out one of these right here, and I'll see you over there.